Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for having us here at PackagingCon. My name is Lukas Spüringer, and I work at NYU Secure Systems Lab on uh, software supply chain security. And I'm here with my friend Cairo. Hi. Uh, so I'm Cairo. I, am, I work at uh, VMware in the open source uh, program office uh, in the security supply uh, chain uh, team as well. So we will present about our stuff today. Yeah, today we're going to tell you that package distribution security is important, which you probably already know because you just heard it in the prior talk. Um, we're going to show you how TUF, which is short for the update framework, is a one-size-fits-all solution for this problem. And we're not going to lie to you. Um, TUF adoption is not the easiest thing to do. Um, that's the flip side of this um, universal um, claim or this versatility of TUF, that there is no one-size-fits-all TUF implementation. And we'll also show you a solution for that problem, which is called RSTUF, which is a uh, one-size-fits-quite-a-few sol solution and implementation for TUF. But let's start with uh, secure package distribution. And thanks to uh, Max and Gary for um, providing the numbers for this um, to support this claim. Secure package distribution is important because the distribution platform is where um, things get multiplied. So if you have one artifact that is, that is compromised on your distribution platform, you, can comprom you have potentially millions of um, end user devices or um, servers where things get deployed, uh, medical devices compromised as well. So this huge impact of a single compromise makes it very attractive for attackers. Um, and it's not only the impact, but also the attack surfaces, uh, which is re really um, big. Because modern software has, as we also heard in the prior talk, huge dependency graphs. And if anywhere in that dependency graph there is a compromise, um, millions of devices, again, may be affected. Um, not, they, not necessarily, but they may be affected. Um, so the solution for this problem is usually to sign things. You can sign artifacts, think GPG. You can sign the communication channel, think TLS, um, and you should be fine. Well, signing alone is not enough. You also need um, to know which keys to trust uh, to create a signature. And this uh, last question from the Q&A from the previous talk was actually a perfect slide to our talk. Um, you need to know which key is trusted to provide a signature for an artifact or for metadata or for whatnot. And equally important, you need to know which key no longer should be trusted because the key holder changed the company, because the key, key got lost or uh, got compromised. Tough, the update framework, uh, provides answers for these questions. Um, Tough is built to protect the integrity consistency and freshness of your um, software artifacts. Um, it uses signatures for that, <laughs> obviously. Um, but TUF also allows you to manage these trust um, definitions or trust in general at different levels of scale. Um, it is built to reduce the impact of a single key compromise. And in my opinion, the killer feature of TUF is it allows embed um, recovery of a key. So in its design, um, is, um, it defines how you can rotate or revoke a key that uh, has been compromised or lost. Um, the TUF specification defines a couple of primitives for this. Um, it has roles for the responsibilities in your package manager. Um, it defines metadata formats for those roles. And it defines the relationship between the roles and with regards to the artifacts that you're uh, trying to protect at the end of the day. So basically, you only need to create and maintain uh, a few pieces of metadata in a tough powered repository. You only need to do this. Um, but the problem, or one problem, is that um, you need to pick uh, which metadata you actually want. So um, 
TUF allows you to have only a minimal set of metadata, but it, can, it also allows you to define arbitrarily complex trust hierarchies in your repository. And you can um, pick a specific TUF setup according to your requirements or constraints in your uh, repository. Uh, but whatever setup you pick uh, also determines your security properties. So different tough compliant setups uh, may mean different um, uh, security properties. So I already hinted at that. Uh, tough is tough. Um, it's not easy to build a tough repository. Um, yeah. When I say tough is tough, I mean the repository, not the client, because the client, using a client or integrating it with your package manager is actually pretty easy. There is a well-defined workflow which works for any tough setup that you have, and you can use one of the implementations that exists practically off the shelf. But the repository does not have a universal implementation, so in order to integrate it with your repository, you need deep expert knowledge about tough. Um, and you need considerable, considerable resources to design and engineer and maintain the tough implementation. All the while, it's uh, still pretty easy to mess it up. So if you don't get it right, then you subvert your security guarantees. And before I hand over to Cairo to present the solution for this problem, uh, I'll take you on a very brief excursion called PEP458, uh, which is a Python enhancement proposal to secure PyPI downloads with signed repository metadata. It's a very specific tough setup, um, which is basically like it provides, or you can see it a bit as a better TLS. Um, it makes so that storage and transport security are non-critical, so uh, you don't have to care whether the artifacts in your S3 bucket or where they're, wherever they are stored um, are secure there. Um, it gives you rollback and freeze protection. Um, it adds this tough killer feature of explicit key revocation. And very importantly, with PEP458, you don't have any um, change of workflows for the users, the package maintainers who upload things to PyPI, or the users who, um, who fetch packages from PyPI. A um, bit of history of PEP458, it was created 10 years ago, and it is not in production yet. Um, among the problems, or like among the reasons why that is so, is that the PEP itself is, when you print it out, about 40 pages of A4. Um, very complex um, design, but it's no implementation design. So if you sit down and want to implement this, and Will uh, <laughs> keeps nodding because he knows this, uh, if you sit down and try to implement this, you still need to fill a couple of blind sp spots. Um, and we will sit down and tried it, and Cairo sat down and tried it, and I helped. Um, we did implement PEP458 for uh, PyPI. Uh, we ended up with a 3.5 K uh, lines of code, deep integration into the warehouse code base. Warehouse is the software that powers PyPI. Um, and th this was only a work in process POC, so there would have been more, we would have needed more code. Um, and this was just not very feasible for PyPI maintainers to review um, because of the size and because they needed, they would have needed very deep expert knowledge of the PEP and of TUF um, and of Warehouse, obviously, to know if all of this is correct. So the solution we came up with uh, was to hide all that TUF complexity and also all of that infrastructure com complexity in a service. And that's where I'm going to hand over to Cairo. Thank you, Lucas. So yeah, I will present now about the repository service for TUF, the project that uh, was inspired by PEP458. So, yeah, we want to protect our stuff using tough, but it's tough, so we come up with our stuff. Well, um, our stuff, as mentioned, was created from uh, uh, the PEP458. I was the second attempt to implement PEP458. William, that's here, also tried it. And yeah, when I was implementing this, I come up with the idea uh, what if you can reuse this for other repositories, uh, for other organizations, not only for PyPI, but uh, uh, other public repositories? So on my uh, summer holiday, I, I 
I did some prototype and uh, presented some folks and it was interesting because uh, right after uh, UC uh, at Tough Maintain mentioned this in the Open Source Summit that uh, repositories are more alike than they are different. So I, I, I thought, okay, the idea might work out, that tried it. So we start uh, trying to abstract the tough specification complexity. But I'm not expert in tough as well. I had a lot of help from uh, the experts because it's easy to mess up. Uh, so Lucas, uh, Joshua, and you helped me to understand better while I was working the PEP458 and when I was uh, working um, at uh, R stuff. So what is R stuff? So, our stuff is a collection of components that provide uh, services to secure repository. It doesn't matter which kind of repository you want. I will go through those details uh, later. So we abstract the complexity of implementing TUF uh, in the repository side, as Lucas mentioned. The client side is pretty easy to, to work on. So there are a lot of features, uh, as uh, Lucas mentioned, in, in TUF. But it's really hard how I work with those features. So how I, revo how I revoke a key, how I rotate a key. So we've taught also in the guided uh, administration. And of course, make it easy to integrate, how I integrate it easily in my uh, environment. So uh, let's start uh, talking about uh, the project origins. It started at uh, VMware. But as soon as possible, we moved it to the neutral organization. So now uh, our stuff is part of uh, OpenSSF, Secure uh, Software Repository Working Group, that is on the uh, Linux Foundation. So, <clears throat> okay. How uh, about the tough our stuff design? So first, we want it make it easy to deploy. So we, de we provide as services uh, as a container image. Uh, the reason is also because it was originated on PEP458, a Python project. Uh, we use Python language, and uh, we don't want to make it like, oh, this is for Python. No, it's not for Python. That's why we try to also uh, hide it. And we also provide a command light uh, interface to administrate uh, these repositories. Oh, sorry. So we also talk about the scalability and consistency. I like to put it together because you need to think like solutions to, to handle, like PyPI. It's uh, almost 9 million of packages, about 10 new uh, uploads per month. So how you can uh, deal with all this traffic and also make the, the tough metadata consistent. So uh, we, we made it also as a, a key uh, design for our stuff and make it easy to integrate using the REST API. So this is a, an, a, an overview about how we integrate our, uh, our stuff to your uh, public repository or your private repository. So if you see, we built the, the, the data platform distribution could be PyPI or RubyGems. It's a, we keep how uh, it is, so you, you produce the artifact and uh, deliver it in the public repository. What you need to do, it's a call to our stuff with the information about the artifact, and then it will be handled uh, in the metadata. So um, it was about 3,000 uh, lines of code. If you go also for this implementation, this is Rube Gems. They did a POC with our stuff. Here's this interesting case. You can find in their repository also the first attempt to use a, a TUF. Uh, a work in progress was about 1,500 uh, lines of code. And here's the full uh, integration uh, uh, for uh, RubyGems. And uh, Yosef, uh, RubyGems maintainer, mentioned that, OK, we fit all the integration in one screen. So this is how uh, it could be applied to, to RubyGems. And the next step is to uh, move it to the uh, staging environment. So here's uh, Justin Kapus uh, commenting. Uh, he's uh, one of the authors of TUF, saying that it's very impressive. Uh, really, it is because it fits in one screen. So uh, when I, I talk about the guided administration for our stuff, 
how we, what we are talking here about. Because when it, we have tough, uh, we um, have all these features about key rotation, uh, but how I create my first metadata, how I sign my first metadata, uh, how I do the key rotation, what if someone leaves the organization and I need to revoke these keys, or the, the key is leaked, what I do. So we try to guide uh, the, the users of uh, our stuff through this. <clears throat> and the easiest way to start with our stuff, for example, is using the CLI, because this is where you can see really the guided process. Uh, here's an example. Uh, we, we also give explanation about what means that a root key can do or who is the owner of the, uh, the, this root key. And also we, we have like a step-by-step -step guidance asking the user the questions. You want to remove this key? You want to add a new key? What do you want to do? What is this key? You can load this key. You want to sign. So, and we try to give like a colorful uh, overview to make it uh, readable for the users. The CLI is just one uh, inspiration to work through the API. You can also implement it on your uh, um, platform. For example, PyPI can use uh, this in an administrative uh, interface or Ruby gems. <clears throat> so, and why our stuff is good for PyPI and other organization, even uh, uh, private? So. First thing, it's artifact agnostic. Doesn't matter if you are storing pa Python package, uh, root package, uh, Rust package, or SBOMs, you can store them in, uh, and sign them in the uh, tough metadata. So it's language agnostic. You need to interact with an API, so you can use your own uh, platform to integrate it. And as you saw, the release process, we don't want to change your release process, how you build your package. But uh, we want to add a step there that you can just publish your artifact in the tough metadata as well. And how you can deploy our stuff. You can deploy on, on premises or uh, on public cloud. We are now working to support, for example, S3 to store the tough metadata. Um, so it's very flexible. Uh, the way that you do this. So what's the current features of uh, TUF, our stuff? So I will be very quick on this. We have the bootstrap ceremony, how I create my first root metadata. You want to import your existent trusted artifacts. For example, PyPI has almost 9 million of package. You don't want to start protecting from now, but you want to also import all the existent uh, uh, artifacts that you have. And of course, you can add and remove artifacts using the REST API in your normal flow of uh, uh, publishing uh, new package. And the key rotation, key revocation process. And also, we have some uh, key generation tooling because we support now a limited number of uh, type of keys, but we are extended this. So let's, uh, uh, I prepared some demos here. Uh, this is uh, the work in progress of PEP458. We will see the R stuff and PyPI. <clears throat> so, okay, uh, here's my development environment, the PyPI, uh, the warehouse. So I'm using the uh, this, the, the R stuff package, and you can see I have one release here. That's zero uh, three. What I'm gonna do here? I'm the developer. I'm using Twine. It's a very common tool for uploading Python package. I'm, of course, I'm uploading to my development environment. I'm uploading my new version uh, to the warehouse, the pi my local PyPI. So what you see here, it's important to to show. It's like you didn't see any change for the developer. It's still the same flow. Uh, we don't need to to say about oh how I upload uh, something using Tuff. It's transparent to the user, to the developer user. And here now we see um, <clears throat> the client side, the user installing a, a Python package. So you see it runs normally, don't, no change to the user as well. Uh, but if you go and see in the verbose mode what is happening when I'm downloading this artifact, it's, you can see some uh, are, uh, tough uh, calls in the client side. So I implemented. Uh, the, in the, this pip, uh, the tough client using Python library. Then you can see the metadata, the timestamp, snapshot, and then go to the, uh, the metadata and checking uh, all the artifacts before they downloaded it. 
And maybe you are curious how a tough metadata looks like. So here you can see uh, the metadata storing. You see this not one to one. One metadata can store many artifacts information. And here you see the, the package, but you have other packets here. And you see the signature part as well of this metadata that uh, it's validated uh, across the different roles. So now let's play a bit. What happened if I tempered this package in the, the repository? So here I hack it, uh, the, the repository, and I created a, a malicious content in the, uh, the file. And I will demonstrate also how it happens in the client side. Of course, uh, the way that I will show here, it's a bit ugly. You see that the user will try to download it, but it got an exception. You don't want to show an exception, but here it's just to. You see, when it's checking the metadata, it's checking that uh, there is a, a length mismatch. Um, it's not only about the size. Of course, PyPI does it now. Uh, check the, 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 uh, the SHA of the, the, the key, uh, the signature, the, the hash of the key of the package, but it's not only this, it's using uh, TUF here. So next, this is also the POC from uh, iStuff and RubGens. Uh, I just received it and uh, I updated my slides, so I hope everything is okay here, yeah. So here you see the same case uh, that uh, uh, we have the gen is not pushed, and then in the second uh, you see that the, the, the gem is pushed and, uh, and it's valid. And the third one, the gen is changed with different uh, length, and uh, different with the same length, but observe that the hash doesn't match. So this is actually the, it's a simulation of the uh, gem uh, command to download the, the package. So I will now give it a space for my friend here. <laughs> yeah, we want to conclude the presentation. Thanks, Cairo, for. <laughs> talking us through our stuff. Uh, we're going to conclude the presentation with an outlook. Um, so we're working on improving our stuff, uh, the tools that we currently have there. Uh, we want to add more backend flexibility so that you can store the metadata wherever you want, um, uh, use other, like different signing providers, uh, different KMS services. Um, so that's like improving the status quo, but we also want to improve the tough setup behind it. So uh, right now you have something that resembles better TLS, which is an online key model, minimum security tough model, but we want to be able to use, like to make it just as simple as Cairo just showed to provide uh, stronger security guarantees like end-to-end -end security. And we want to do this by consolidating emerging technologies. Uh, we want to be able to um, use Sixter for signing, um, include like information about the supply chain, like S-bombs or salsa attestations. And we want to be able to express policies about the supply chain using, for instance, in total layouts or techn technologies like that. So to recap, um, in a sales pitchy manner. <laughs> um, yeah, we strongly recommend looking into our stuff um, to protect uh, your package manager, if you're a package manager person. Um, you get a better TLS today with very little effort, um, and you'll have a stepping stone for um, more stronger security, for stronger security models uh, in the future. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, just to say, our stuff is better now. Uh, go there, try it, uh, complain with us, help us to make it uh, uh, better. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. We have a little time for questions, so let's kick it off. Hey, thank you for the talk. Um, so, as you know, one of the issues we had with the original 458 implementation was that it was very difficult to operationalize tough. And so, Specifically, the, one of the issues we had was the trusted setup phase involved HSMs. And so what I was curious about was, does our stuff have a solution for that, or is that also still difficult to operationalize? Um, we have a solution in uh, the Python tough library. Um, so you can easily sign 
So our stuff builds on the Python Tough library, which, when Will worked on it, uh, tried to be a repository implementation, but we realized that's just not possible. So the Python Tough library or like the t is a low-level library these days, and it allows you to ergonomic ergonomically interact with tough metadata and use different methods of signing. And there we have support for signing with HSM. Um, it's not enabled in our stuff yet, but it's on our roadmap. Thank you. Yeah, and just to complement, one thing that we also support, it's uh, distributed asynchronous signing. Because, for example, pull repositories like PyPI, you have uh, the administrators across uh, different uh, regions. And we want to support HSM on that as well. So. Yeah, so follow up, we actually have implemented support for three different uh, cloud key providers. We support HSMs. We can uh, provide, like, sign with six store, six store identities. Um, we just need to enable this in our stuff, but yeah. yeah. More questions? We're around for uh, the entire conference, and all, I'm all here also on Saturday. So if you have questions about Tough, uh, uh, please come to me. We actually have two questions online. OK. So I'll read you the first one. I assume our staff provides online live resigning of the repository using a limited privilege key kept in escrow by the repository. Uh, I, can, can you repeat, repeat the question? Please, yeah. <laughs> I assume our staff provides online live re-signing of the repository using a limited privilege key kept in escrow by the repository. Um, it's a <laughs> abstract question, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, as I said, the exact signing mechanism um, that you use for the online key currently uses file-based keys. Um, in this phase of the implementation, but we want to change this so that you can use HashiCorp Vault or a Google uh, KMS or Azure KMS or AWS uh, KMS. Uh, maybe that answers the question. Yeah, I will give a follow up here. Yeah, we have the online key for the, the signing repository, but we also have the offline keys that are uh, honored by the root, so they can rotate the online key uh, as they need. Yeah. And then another question is, did I spy key ID in some JSON? Does it interoperate with JWK endpoints? Or JWK is? No, no, <laughs> no. We don't uh, use authentication authorization in the API anymore. Uh, this is uh, up to the who is deploying. And uh, what you can see uh, there are the public parts of the key in the JSON. Right? Yeah, the key IDs are just um, ways of identifying keys in tough metadata so that you, like, tough metadata consists of the key store, the public key, st um, contains the public key store. And then you can, like, define trust relationships via other metadata, and you're using key IDs to make that definition. But those key IDs are local, so they're and public on standard formation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And public information. Yeah, that too. So maybe one last question before the break. Mm -hmm. uh, with my pip maintainer hat on, where can I see the draft pip implementation? Sorry? <laughs> Do you have a draft implementation for pip? Oh, yeah. For Actually, I, 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 I steal it from uh, UC, and I update it. But we have this. Uh, I can share. Just ping me. 